Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Ubuntu 20.04 was released today and it's going to be the next flagship for Ubuntu and Linux distributions in general. It's also going to serve as the base for a lot of other distributions like Elementary OS 6 or Linux Mint 20. The thing is going to be supported for at least two years and probably a lot more than this, so I think it's time we take a look at what's new in this new version and how it's important. So let's start right after this. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable to host anything in the cloud. I've shown you how to set up your own Minecraft server on Linode, but with their one-click apps, you can also deploy servers for other games like Arc, Rust or CSGO. If you're looking to build your own website, Linode offers a lot more power and control over your server than entry-level hosting solutions, and lets you truly own your website. Every plan comes with Linode's fully human-powered customer support, so if you need help, you will have someone on the phone answer your emails or even reply to you on social networks 24-7, 365 days a year. If you're more into doing it all yourself, Linode has thousands of docs to help you do all the things you want and even things you didn't know you wanted to do, because if it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Get $20 free credit on your new Linode account by signing up at linode.com slash linuxexperiment. I'll leave a link in the description below. Ok, so let's start with the visual improvements to the theme. Ubuntu 20.04 offers a lot more options for user customization. The desktop theme now offers three variants, light, dark and standard, which mixes light backgrounds and dark header bars. These variants of the theme can be selected in the Appearance tab in the settings for more convenience. The Yaru icon theme has also received changes, specifically to the look of folders. They now look a lot darker with purple and aubergine accents. These accents echo the modifications in the desktop theme, which replaces some of the orange highlights with the same purple color. Ubuntu Focal Fossa has a striking appearance, I must say, whatever the variant used. It's professional and stylish, but I must say the folder change is not really to my taste. It's a personal opinion, but I think they're too dark and not that legible, especially in a dark background. They lack contrast and don't seem really coherent with the rest of the icons. Now, Ubuntu 20.04 introduces some changes to the desktop, some of their own volition and some that they inherited from GNOME 3.36.1, which is the latest version of that desktop environment. On the Ubuntu-specific front, the Amazon Web App has finally been removed. It had been a contentious point for some users since the date had been introduced in Unity, because of some privacy problems, but also because it was way too commercial and it was an ad right in the middle of your OS. It did seem to generate Ubuntu some money, but they decided to remove it. I think it's a good thing. No one wants advertising in their operating system. Ubuntu also started shipping its software store as a snap instead of a dev package. It's still the same GNOME software with the snap plugin installed by default. This has one impact though. This snap version isn't yet compatible with Flatpak, so to get access to FlatHub and Flatpak applications, users will have to uninstall the snap and install the good old dev version of the store instead. I'm not for or against Snap specifically, I think it's normal that Ubuntu is trying to push their own packaging formats and Snap isn't bad and they have a ton of apps available there, but I just wish they had done so without it being at the expense of the end user. Flatpak has gained a lot of traction, they have tons of apps, and I don't think it's normal for a distribution to not ship Flatpak support out of the box nowadays. So maybe they should have waited to ship their Snap store with a Flatpak plugin installed, instead of just pushing the snaps really hard. Now for the stuff that GNOME 3.36 introduces. I'm not going to remake the whole GNOME 3.36 release video that I already made. If you want to watch all the little details, I have a video in the card up top. I'll just go over the main big features. First, there is a new extension app that allows you to update automatically and manage your extensions, negating one of the biggest uses of GNOME tweaks. The Ubuntu-specific extensions, like the dock, are also handled there. The shell has a new layout based on cards, as does the search view in the activity menu. This makes it a lot more legible and clear to read. A Do Not Disturb toggle has also been added to the notifications clock panel to allow for easy access. The lock screen has been tweaked as well, making choosing a user and typing the password feel a bit faster. It's a bit heavy on the blur for my tastes, but it looks good and while they are the same number of steps to log in, it's still a faster experience than before. The GNOME settings have been revamped quite a bit with the deep navigation being removed and most settings being accessible directly without digging down in a secondary menu. It makes it a lot simpler to understand and find useful categories like, for example, the display settings. The shell also has a few small tweaks, like taking into account the user-defined font, adding a little i in the password dialogs to make sure that there aren't any typos, and these dialogs have also been unified to look a bit more coherent. The upgrade has also received some attention, especially in the app folder department, 
Well, these can now be renamed and are more legible thanks to being centered and having smoother animations. Fractional scaling is now also available directly in the display settings. It offers 25% increments from 100% to 200% and should be a boon for users with high DPI displays. It's even available on X11 and not limited to Wayland and supports per display scaling. It's a major advancement, although it doesn't seem extremely stable and doesn't work at all with NVIDIA proprietary drivers. The usual bunch of performance improvements have also been added, to the point where GNOME is now extremely fast and responsive. I haven't experienced any lag, stutters or delays when using it on my MateBook 13 or my Ryzen and RTX desktop. And that's a big achievement. The Ubuntu desktop is in a good place nowadays. It's fast, it looks professional, it's smooth, it's kinda beautiful, and I like their no-nonsense approach of just shipping some small tweaks to the GNOME desktop. Now, In terms of plumbing, Ubuntu 20.04 ships with the Linux kernel 5.4, but they did tweak a little bit more. They added the XFAT support out of the box, improved the hardware compatibility, and they backported the WireGuard VPN protocol from the Linux kernel 5.6 to 5.4, since it's an up-and-coming protocol that's gonna be used more in the future, and they want to future-proof that LTS distro. Ubuntu 20.04 also has improved ZFS support and will also axe 32-bit system compatibility entirely. Now, they will keep some libraries available for some who need them, but you won't be able to upgrade your 32-bit system to this new version of Ubuntu, so if you're on a 32-bit computer, you need to move on to another machine or keep using what you were using before. Now, the boot experience now displays the OEM logo at the same time as the system loading indicator to make things a bit smoother. The true flicker-free boot sequence can only be experienced with Wayland and open source drivers though, so we're not there yet, but it's still a step in the right direction. It also probably pleases OEMs and might make them more amenable to ship computers with Linux pre-installed, so why not? Now that's it for the big changes in Ubuntu 20.04 proper. But let's take a look at what's new in the other flavors. Ubuntu 20.04 uses KDE 5.18 LTS with the latest batch of KDE applications. You can watch my video on KDE 5.18 to see all the new stuff they released. Ubuntu 20.04 also replaced their Cantata music player with Eliza, a really good and nice looking piece of software. You'll also be able to install an unsupported Wayland session to start trying out how Plasma handles that. Ubuntu Budgie 20.04 has a new application menu inspired by the one in Elementary OS. They also added a new Network Manager applet to better handle internet connections, it now supports high DPI better and has a new desktop layout selector to quickly switch between various looks. Gnome Media Player has also been replaced by Celluloid, and the Drawing App, a small paint-like application, has been added to the default ISO. Xubuntu 20.04 has a new dark theme, called Greybird Dark, but apart from that, and given the slow release cycle of XFCE, it seems most of the changes in the latest installment of Xubuntu are under the hood and not desktop-facing. Also, please the Xubuntu team, start releasing your release notes early so we know what's new. Ubuntu Mate 20.04 brings high DPI support, window preview in the taskbar, as well as a new notification indicator with a do not disturb mode. They ship Mate 1.24, which has a ton of new stuff as well, such as a redesigned alt tab and workspace switcher, a new disk image mounter utility, and a new date and time application. Ubuntu Studio 20.04 has a host of new audio plugins included by default, and the Ubuntu Studio Controls lets you choose the names you want to give to your Pulse Audio Jack bridges to make the whole audio management system easier to handle. So, being built on the back of GNOME 3.36, Ubuntu 20.04 is a great version of Ubuntu. It's stable, it's super fast, it's very smooth, it looks good, the new improved theme looks pretty nice and professional, it's a good package all around. Anyone using Ubuntu today should probably upgrade to that distribution unless you're running it on a 32-bit machine. If you can't install any 64-bit version of your system or you really need 32-bit, you're gonna have to stick with the previous OS you were using before. Now, some will lament the fact that snaps are being pushed further and further by Ubuntu and Canonical, and in my opinion, it really doesn't matter anymore. To me, Ubuntu pushing snaps is no more offensive than Fedora pushing Flatpak in their ServerBlue distribution. It's just another way of distributing applications, and Flatpak and Snaps both have their advantages, their issues, and some applications are available in the one or the other. I use each other indiscriminately, as well as good old dev packages, install scripts, or app images. I just don't care, an app is an app. I'll end this video here. Ubuntu 20.04 is a good distribution. It's stable, it's an LTS version, so will be maintained for a long time, and it's a very solid base on which other distributions can build their own stuff. So thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you really did like the video, I have a Patreon page for which I leave a link in the description below. 
Patrons get access to a monthly patron cast, the right to vote on which topics I will cover in the next month, and which games I play on my YouTube gaming channel. So take a look. Now thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!